Alrighty, g'day everyone. How you all doing? For those of you in Twitch and on YouTube, I hope you're all doing well. I'm going to be doing, uh, so instead of Monday Men of Madness, that's now going to be just Men of Madness. Gives me the freedom to do it on whichever day I please. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we're gonna, I'm going to be covering decks from the Cosmic Crown Showdown that have just been uh, finished. Uh, today I'm going to be just doing the one. It's going to be, maybe I'll do like three parts to it or something. Not really decided yet, but I'm going to be covering several of the decks. I don't think I'll do them all. Some of them are fairly straightforward and pretty self-explanatory. Uh, but today I'm going to start off with uh, pretty much the deck that uh, the Dragonborn Guild that I'm a part of ran. Um, the deck I, I, I created, and then uh, JJ and Kaimon got to top 8 uh, with their own little tweaks there. So we're going to look at that. We're going to start off by looking at uh, pretty much the deck that they ran. I think it's pretty much the same as I've got it built. Um, and then we'll, we'll look at my version as well. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Let me get over to Hex. Alrighty. So here we go. So Kagalitru deck, as I'm sure anybody who uh, followed the tournament knows, that uh, Kagalitru deck uh, with the Crusader. So uh, yeah, so my, my version of this uh, was a little different. Uh, and then, uh, as I said, JJ and Kaimai made their own uh, tweaks. Uh, I then ended up not running the deck because I was undecided. I didn't know the other guys were going to run it. Had they said something, I probably would have run it also. But oh well. Anyway, uh, so their version, uh, they they bring, brought in Vampire Kings. That was one of the main things they did there. So I had, uh, uh, so let's see, I had two Master Moss in mine. I had a Raker. So I'll show you guys. For those unfamiliar, uh, I had a couple Master Moss in there, which is this guy. Just giving it a good, uh, you know, good anti-extinction. Since it is a very troop-based deck, it's with a lot less control, which is uh, not standard for you know Kegelitru decks. They're generally running extinction, of course. Uh, but I wanted to make a more aggressive deck, uh, and the, you know the, the first thing I when I wanted to build the deck to make a more aggressive deck was including this fantastic card here, as I I realized that it wouldn't wouldn't be hard to to meet the requirement for this guy, uh, as there are lots of cards you can run. To uh, to to get that that you know as just one ofs that are good cards they're not you know you're not filling your deck with trash to meet the requirement so uh, you know, that was my starting point because uh, obviously you know Kagalichu people had been testing uh, Kagalichu decks you know with with a lot of uh, the cards that you know you're going to see a lot of staples in Kagalichu decks uh, but I decided to I wanted I wanted to get this card just because it's so fantastic you know drawing two cards when it dies just for two health is insanely good obviously it's bad against Void. But uh, yeah, just very good and very good pressure card. So, as I said, I had two Master Moss uh, in my original list. I had a Raker as just a one-of. Again, it's an Underworld. And it's a good one-of. You know, it's a, it's a five-drop uh, that is basically a three-for-one in some situations. You're getting them to discard two, and you get a nice body. So, I still like the card. But I do think I agree with just going a little bit lower to the curve with the deck. So, that's, the, I guess, the change JJ made. Uh, you know, they took out, you know, took out this guy. I think I may have had, uh, I, I can't remember actually if I had many other high drops, but it was still, like, it was still fairly low to the ground. Originally I had the, the bunny here with the, uh, the ramp gem here, the wild orb of cultivation, as well as speed. So, and that would uh, just give you some more ramp, while also being a, a decent, you know, play on, like, turn two still. Obviously that'd be a nice play. So it was still, uh, Good. I think I do agree, though. Like, it's one of the things that I was doing is uh, one of the things I showed JJ was that you know it synergizes very well with this resource here, the uh, the the gems that they decided to main deck, and that was something I was doing post uh, post game one to surprise my opponents. Uh, and it just again it synergizes very well with the ability to create this battle hopper for free to get a sacrifice target. And uh, so as I said, they decided to run these these main deck. And I think it is actually the correct move to do that. Um, let me actually just uh, grab them so I tell one. <laughs> so uh, I don't know why my chat's not being captured. That's very strange. Makes it a bit harder for me to read. But anyway, so um, yeah, I do think that it is actually better just because, you know, you do get another threat. Um, yes, you lose out on your ramp, but as I said, the deck is now a bit lower to the ground uh, with the inclusion of Vampire King. I mean, I guess I didn't have many other high drops, but I, at one point I was considering Yazoo Can, but I ended up taking that out. 
which is this guy here. I mean, it's still a great card. There's a lot of great cards you can put in. Like, this is a great one of. Um, even, you could potentially run this in the reserves. Uh, against certain matchup, it will do work. Uh, which actually, JJ may have run this in the reserves. I'm not entirely sure, as I don't, I didn't bother to, to go check the the reserve changes. I know, I, I'll talk about that later anyway. The reserves. So main deck wise, as I said, uh, when I was building the deck, I wanted to do it. You know, I wanted the Crusader. I, I love this card. It's fantastic. A four four for three. Uh, you know, both the Crusaders, the Diamond one and the Blood one, are great. But the Blood one stands out as you know just so much better in my eyes because of the drawing two cards on death is a fantastic trigger um, the other upside well the downside more to the diamond one is it is not good against crocosaur because when that one dies getting two di uh, little phantoms on the board uh, enables crocosaur you know for whatever their actual threat is because two phantoms are they can be a threat but it's unlikely um, and then you know when they put down something that you need to kill the Crocosaur is going to be enabled thanks to that, so in, in my opinion it's a bit more of a downside in a lot of cases, but obviously if you're not against, you know, wild it's it's not a, as, as big a deal. But yeah, so the Underworld Crusader, fantastic card, so it does require that 10 differently named troops, and uh, the Crusader himself is one of those. So as I said, you can get a lot of nice one of So in my list I had, you know, the Sensei, the Exarch, the Explorer, I didn't bother with the Shoku, at one point I considered it, but I didn't bother. Something JJ decided to bring back in. Devil's Head Rider, I love this card as a one-off, so I, that was one of the ones I put in straight away. Same with the Poor, of course, they're great as one-offs because you know you're, it's in, in most games. Like if you run multiple of these, you, you're not going to reliably be able to use the scroungers uh, too easy. And there's other good one-offs that I would like to, I like to include, which is like was it was it Wakazashi Ambusher, and the reason why this is a good one as well is it is something that can answer a Lixel as it does have the minus minus effect. I mean, it's just a really nice effect, and it's a nice two for one. Something you can tunnel, and then say you're doing the shot to make a battle hopper, and then you're doing the sacrifice. There's lots of synergies you can do there. Uh, and then obviously with the lackey, there is a one of. Um, but yeah, so basically, again, lots of good one ofs, uh, and that you can really easily, so let me actually just count here. So there's one, two, three, four. Uh, Monsoon obviously is a one of. Uh, Shin here, so Underworld. Five and then six of the Runeer himself. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's exactly ten, I guess, in JJ's list. I think in my my previous one I had eleven, just so I had the, a little bit of flexibility when it came to to the sideboard. Um, but yeah, so again, uh, the other th the other thing they did also change is main deck wise. I I was undecided really on the gems, but when I shared the list, I was using this one. But this is definitely better. It's uh, just yeah, just, just flat out better using Skyguard Steadfast. Um, just gives you obviously offense and defense and uh, protection against vampires and you know flyers and all that. So definitely better to run the Skyguard Steadfast there. But yeah, so you can pretty much see the synergies the deck has to offer. Um, and then obviously uh, Might Singer here, just a great card to just get you that draw. So a lot of good stuff working together there. And really good one ofs like sacrifice effect, you know, nice two for one, nice two for one, nice two for one. Uh, this is you know you're gonna get back cards when it dies. Obviously, Hero Falls is fantastic. Something actually they they ran three of this JJ and Kindmo I think, which I think I would still like. I'm gonna stick with four in, in mine, but I do agree with making the deck a little bit lower. Master Moss I guess is not really like Master Moss is a good card, uh, especially against like post extinction and stuff like that because it will stick around. But I think just having more threats in the deck is actually the correct way to go. So I do agree with the Vampire Kings. I think I still want, as I said, the four Hero Falls. And then, yeah, the Gem chain Changes main deck is better. And yeah, so that's pretty much the deck. Uh, good shard base, you know, great fixing. Is one of the reasons why I actually was like, screw it, I'm going to just build a Kagalitru deck. Is because I wanted to build... Uh, there were several decks I wanted to build, but they didn't, they didn't have wells yet. So... I was like, screw it, I want to play a deck that can use a well, because I love that fixing. Uh, so let's go have a look at the sideboard before we get into a game, real quick. So this is a little bit different to what JJ and Kai might ran, but for the most part, they stuck to pretty much what I showed them. I then ended up changing, uh, after some more testing, I changed mine to have these. Um, I kept this in there, just because it is a nice one-drop for against aggro. Uh, I think J JJ took these out, which uh, obviously cost him a game when he versed uh, 
Kind Mime. That gave Kind Mime a bit of an advantage since the deck does run a lot of soccer troops, uh, eight, eight in total. But yeah, JJ decided to take those out for two more Cluckadons, I believe. And I can't remember what uh, what the uh, they they don't they I don't think they ran the Grim Justice, but I like the Grim Justice in the deck, and I'm going to keep it in there because it does synergize well with these guys, um, and it also synergizes well with all these other you know low drops we have can get back Might Singers and all that good stuff. You can just you know getting back an Exarch, an Acolyte, all that. So plenty of things to get back, and that's why I like it in there. Um, now the biggest weakness for this deck which uh, we may end up uh, running into. So we're going to actually jump in a ladder match here. So we have to go to battle. Whoops, no, I didn't click that. <laughs> misclicked. I actually misclicked during a, during a game early and cost myself the game. <laughs> Battlegrounds, rank constructed, let's get in there. So, confirm. So hopefully it shouldn't take too long. There's these games firing off a lot. So we'll see what we get matched up against. If we get Mono Ruby, it'll be interesting because I think that is probably the deck's worst matchup out of the decks that people were running. Yodel, eh, I think should be okay because uh, it does still have. We do still have the Clackadons, but uh, could be tough. Well, let's find out. Let's see what my hand's like. So that's a pretty decent opening hand there. So we're gonna keep that. The Lackey's gonna have to wait, so he's gonna Mulligan. So we're gonna do, yeah, we'll do this. We'll grab a blood, I guess. It's not. Uh, I mean, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should just play this here, tunnel that into, potentially interrupt my curve by doing that later. But because we do obviously need thresholds in both colors, but I think it's probably just correct to take the blood there and hope everything works out. So I could play this, but I think I will just. I'm just gonna tunnel this here. Next turn I can play the Underworld Crusader, which will be nice, because that is a good pressure card. And it's also hard to... I mean, it's not hard for Yodel to really deal with, because a, a Bolt will work, but, you know, they, they might not have a Bolt. So Burns won't work. You know, a great thing about the, the four back end is uh, very, very relevant. Again, very... Uh, I was very much wanting to use this card, so... It's why when I decided to build a Kagu list, that uh, was the first thing I went for was... Let's include the Crusader. Very good card, and very good with these gems. My original, my original uh, actually deck I did build was a, a very aggressive deck, and I used the I was using the crush, and I was also using the bunny with the lethal to underworld troops and uh, plus one plus one, which does work really nice. I've actually got a different deck that I'm tweaking for those gems, but uh, yeah, this deck I think is better with these gems. Also, another great thing about this card is the fact that uh, you don't have to commit too much to the board. Like, this and something else is enough of a threat if you're against, like, blood and you think they're running extinction. You definitely do not need to overcommit and hurt yourself. So, I'm actually curious to how... Let me actually think. So he obviously doesn't have another in hand. He would have played it. Uh, but, no, he's maybe leaving up burn because he wants to uh, block and... Hmm. So I could potentially make him use a burn here by letting him block and then, you know, do, do that sort of stuff. But I'm just going to do this and just kill it. <laughs> and we're going to avoid all the, those Dark Spires. But I don't even know if it's if they run several, you know, all four. But very likely, very likely. But he's potentially annoyed right now as he might have more in hand, but he didn't play it because, well, there's no reason not to play a second, I think, and then just double block if he wants to deal with my troop that way. But uh, yeah, uh, technically the correct move here, uh, as I was saying, would be probably to wait to see if he blocks. And yeah, so that, that is actually yeah, what I should have done. Because he did have the burn, and so he just decides to do that himself. I mean, he still I still made him waste the card. And I did take the damage trigger, so that's good. But uh, yeah, so I did think that's what he was doing. And as I said, it, it is the correct move to do there. But I didn't really care. <laughs> But yeah, it would have been the more optimal play. It was kind of obvious that's what he was going to do there. Because not having something to play on two uh, resources is pretty strange with this deck. But I'm okay with that. As I'm still in a very, very good position. Again, this by itself is a very good threat. Alright, so he's going to heal a bit. So he's only got two cards already. And that's obviously very good for me if I get a wild shard. And we're going to... There's the ambush coming down. 
So he's going to lose the duelist. So looking very good here. And yeah, so the reason I put the ambusher in the deck was, again, because it can deal with things that, uh, you know, just certain removal can't deal with. It gives you an, an out versus certain decks. Uh, so let's see here. I guess we're just going to do a sensei. I don't, I don't think you play this card unless you're actually able to play a wild straight away, in my opinion. So, I mean, now I could, because he, you know, he, he's running out of removal, he's got too many things, so there's no, no reason for me not to play it here. So I will actually just do that. And it's <laughs> it's not a deck that really runs Extinction. I will be surprised if he, if he does that. I'll be like, what? <laughs> but the upside here, of course, is I will, you know, even if I was to get blown out here, which is super unlikely, um, the upside, I'm not actually going to use the charge power yet. The upside being that I would draw two cards, I've still got my charge power, and actually he just quits. But uh, yeah, so I'd, I'd still get cards, and yeah, would be fine. So again, so we're against this deck. Let's do some changes. So Crocosaur, not needed, very slow. We definitely want all four of these. Now we do need to be careful, because as I said, their list is not running the 11 Underworld, so I have to be making sure I'm keeping, the, you know, if I, if I want to take out a one of, I then have to replace it, which would mean this guy, which is not actually useful against that deck. So we're not going to bother with that. Hmm. So I can I can take out some Runiers if I like. That is one thing I can consider. But a lot of the one-offs I do need to take out. So Might Singers can actually come out, I think. Like the advantage they give you is nice, but for now I need to... Hmm. <laughs> Need to make sure I'm yeah. So I'm, I'm meeting the restriction. Grim justice. Do I want grim justice? And it's obviously going to have targets, but I may just be better off with more threats for that life drain. So let's do that and that. Let's do three of those. Let's actually take out some kings. Hmm, so I actually, one, one, two, uh, so I could still take out some bunnies. Uh, I'm running out of time. So we'll take out two of them. And we'll do a couple of Grim Justice, why not? I kind of want to get her back in there. Hmm. Eh, that's maybe not the correct sighting there, but I'm running out of time. So yeah, that'll do. Should be okay, but I will need to... I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously getting back Carnosaurs and stuff with Grim against this deck would be fantastic. But let's hopefully draw well. And that's pretty good, pretty good right there. Alright, so we can turn this into a threat, we don't need to necessarily uh, tunnel, especially not with this curve. So let's keep the hand. We're going to do this shard first. Even though I could do the lackey, it's not really worth. And I may draw something that then wants me to then tunnel the monsoon, like I could get a, a vampire prince or something like that. So we get the wild shard here. Not that it's actually that big of a deal what I get. I don't, uh, I mean I do need to still get to three well, actually, no, I took out all the crockers, so I only need to get the two wild now. Don't need them. You know, I took out the, the Mind Singer as well. So, yeah. Alright, so he's going to play an Orc here. Probably a Dark Spire Priestess. Yep. Did it get Rage? No, it didn't, so that's decent. Hmm. So I'll play out my Acolyte, of course. But yeah, so what I'm going to be doing, uh, as I said, for the for the um, for these Meta Madness episodes, I'm going to be covering several of the decks for uh, from the tournament. I'll probably do the uh, the deck Jeff Uglin ran next, the Sapphire Diamond. Because uh, that was another interesting deck. 
got a little bit more, you know, like, the, the Mono Ruby I, I may do an episode on, but it's a pretty straightforward deck, you know. <laughs> it's just all about the speed. Speed, speed, speed. Only having one troop in your deck that doesn't have speed, but it's a one drop, is pretty damn good, especially when it's a 3-1. Alright, so Carnosaur would be a great draw. Vampire King is good though as well, since we did just get... But we don't have time for, uh, we, you know, he may not have a bolt. He may have to use two things to kill this, is what we hope. But uh, I'm in a bit of bit of a pickle. But not not entirely, like it's, you know, Yodel obviously makes, uh, yeah, so he's, he's instantly smashed that, so that's a bolt. Uh, or maybe something else, but it looks like it's going to be a bolt, since he didn't play a ruby there. Yep, that's a bolt. So that's annoying, but at least it's not to my face. But however, I am still taking a decent chunk of damage thanks to the arena regular here. So, uh, he can also now swing in. I've only got the one troop. So I'm in a bit of trouble, and I may be losing this one. Hmm. Alright, that's a decent draw. It's decent, decent, decent. But I'm still in a lot of trouble. Hmm, may actually be correct to get the, try and get the vampire, so let's do that. Just a shot. Alright, not what we needed. Um, yeah. So, because, yeah, he's got a lot of damage on the board right now. Hmm. This is actually pretty bad for me. Hmm. Yeah, this over this will do more damage overall than this. Like you know, he might not have. It's still bad, but I think I have to actually kill this. So we're gonna do that. So Clackadons or Carnosaurs would be nice draws. Hmm. What do we end up losing the hero for? I mean, even uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm taking a lot of damage here. Taking a lot of damage. You can play a shard. Ping me for two. Puts me in a nine. Bang bang. And then this can do four. Put me to five. Oh, oh, that's terrible. Am I just? I'm not dead. I have to kill here. Block there. Block there. I'm going. I'm basically dead. I'm basically dead. Now, sadly, I didn't draw to anything useful, and still nothing useful. So. Wait, okay, I guess I couldn't use that yet, but it doesn't really matter when I didn't draw anything of relevance. A bit too many shards. And yeah, there's not much I can do here. <laughs> so that's a bit of a, a bit of a pain. But oh well, that's all there is to it. I still may be able to like if I can top deck a carnosaur, that's somewhat helpful. Uh <laughs> losing those. Uh, but yeah, top decking a Carnosaur or a Cluckadon. Cluckadon is maybe the better one, but I may just be dead to him top decking here, as any burn will kill me. Uh, even a shard kills me as well. Actually, no, I guess a shard doesn't, but puts me to one. Yeah, so he can ping me, and then he can use that if he wants to, but he probably just waits, because he's not under. It's not like I'm going to turn this game around unless I get a. So he's actually going to use it now without even using the charge power, which makes sense, because he can just. Save that for yeah, Matt too. <laughs> and as I said, I can't, I can't unless I drew. Like that's a good card, but he's just gonna sack that, and I'm gonna die to it, maybe. So it's like yeah, pretty much I am the deads. There's not really any draw he could get that would be bad. And I again, I may just die here to the sacrifice effect. And, uh, wait, <laughs> I guess we don't even see him sack it. I did side out Crocs, as I just think I didn't need them. And they are slow, so... Hmm, I may want more life drain, actually. I may want to get the fan. But it's hard to get in everything, because, again, I have to leave in all those one ofs The Underworld. Unless I want to take these out, which is, a, which is something I could do. It's honestly something I could do. Um, and I might actually do that. Yeah, let's actually do that. Take those out. Take out this. We're going to bring in those. 
We're gonna bring back in these, I think. Get one of these. Two of those. So let's see what what little flubers do we want to take out. This I don't mind. This is okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Poor is yeah, it's, it's fine. It can deal with artifacts and troops. So it's fine. Wakazashi's fine. Hmm. Probably just take out the lackey. Get in another of her. Tempted to also get rid of the explorer. Yeah, I'll just get rid of the explorers. So that leaves me at still 30 troops. That's still good. Yeah, that's probably fine. There's enough removal there. So yeah, that's probably fine. But it's not, uh, you know, the other is the other is the flubes. <laughs> I ended up actually running a yellow deck. An aggressive yodel deck in the tournament is what I ended up just changing to at the last minute. I hadn't slept and I just was so undecided and I was just like, ah, screw it. Because like, I, I had shared, you know, the, this, this, the, the keg, my Kagalichu list with the guild and then I was like, you know, no one really gave me any feedback. So then I just built more decks and then I was like, oh, well, that deck's pretty cool. The, the yodel deck ended up making. And that's a bad hand. So let's ditch that one. And then so I ran that I ran an aggressive deck and then I flooded out, which I'm doing a lot of lately. It's been quite the flubes. I actually played some uh some just some sealed earlier and just yeah. Lots and lots of floods. So we'll play the blood here I guess. Doesn't really matter too much. Yeah, I mean I thought about bringing in the crocos, but I think just one is is, is all I really need. Because I got plenty of removal that, you know, I'm gonna be I'm not gonna be waiting to get it you know two for one with a croco. So poor is decent. Let's play the wild here, let's play the might singer. Which he'll probably burn, which is okay. My hand isn't the greatest, but I can do this, you know. So we want him to we didn't burn at the end of my turn, so he doesn't have a burn. He may not care about this, he might just play something, but if he kills it, that's fine. But we kinda want him to you know, ideally he kills it there, and you know I wanted him to burn and then just play a troop that I could then do this because it would be very nice. But either way, we're still going to have the the hero fall open. Ooh, and now we're well now we're just going to play that as a threat because he did just I mean he can kill it very easily, but it's still good. So let's uh, do that. Grab the blood. Play out the monsoon, the shogun. It's a very nice rage troop, so it's it's great as a one-off. Great card as a one-off, as obviously you've got the flexibility of just playing it as a threat, or tunneling if you have a nice curve that can utilize it. So he plays an ebony pawn. That means he's taking. He's either got a burn. No, he doesn't have a burn because he would have charged powered there and killed this. So that's fantastic. Uh, so we can use this here, but uh, it may actually not be correct to do so. Eh, let's do it should be fine. Like I like the good thing about Grim Justice, right, is if I do get lose a, a Carnosaur, I could then, you know, in this case I didn't, and I actually got a bad shard. And I had more shards in there. But I've still got good pressure, I've got the hero fall. So he obviously didn't have a bolt or a, a burn, so that's a little strange. But that could mean he's got brutalizer and that's what I'm hoping to see here. I really am hoping to see a brutalizer. So please play your brutalizer, Kigo. And Brutalizer. Brutalizer and then burn to the face. Come on. Do it all. Do that. So I, I'm thinking it's Brutalizer. And I'm hoping. Come on. Go for the damage. But I know if he has burn, he'll he'll kill this. And he'll still Brutalize it. But okay. He's going to just kill. That's great. We've made him use a, a card there. He's done not much for the turn. Sadly, I don't have much myself. And we didn't... Drawing a lot of shards again only two here, as so we don't want to use this yet because it can... I mean it's maybe not correct to, to not use it here, but I've got the hero fall open. He's not doing a huge amount of damage without adding more to the board. So I think it would be silly not to wait for one more troop to go in my crypt, which 
Could could I mean it could be wrong. It actually could be very wrong to not just play that there because I mean he obviously had to use that to kill my my three toughest dude, and this is three toughness. So it's actually probably wrong to not just play it out and race him. Uh, but, uh, I'm going to be a little silly, and maybe it'll yeah it maybe actually will cost me the game here as he's if he's just got all artifacts. Well that's super flubes. Come on, play a troop. What is going on? That is not good, my friends. Alright, so I should have played it, and now I'm probably going to lose because I didn't. And that is Super Floobs also. Well, that is not good. Fuck! Fuckity fuck fucks. Damn it. I could do this. Screw it. <laughs> I'm just gonna fuck around now. So uh, we'll grab now a wild. See if we can get. I don't know. I'm still just yeah. This is this is super flubes. All right, we get that, which we can do. Which I, ideally I would like to have left this open, but whatever. So not looking great. I'm probably gonna just die to these. I should have just played this out. But. Uh, it, it probably still, you know, could have potentially still answered, but we're probably going to see a Brutalizer now if he has one. And that's, yeah, a lot of damage, a lot of damage. Can't believe he didn't, did he just take out his troops? I mean, he can't, I mean, he's got, the, the deck runs too many. So yeah, there's the Brutalizer, so that's not good. That is not good, my friends. The upside is I can do... Let me actually check, so I can, I mean, he's going to attack, you would think. So then I'm just going to double block, which, I mean, if he's got anything, I mean. But I'm going to do it just because I lose the troops, and I can do both of these next turn. So even if he did have something there... Uh, yeah, so we're going to kill one of these at least. So this effect may, you know, now that we've got the three troops in there... Hey, go in there, Sawyer. So we'll do that, we'll say yes. We'll click all three. Sadly, I drew another Flubes. Getting close to a charge bear again, though. And I will have the hero fall open though, so that is definitely good. But this is still a clock by itself. So we'll do that. Maybe playing this is the right move, but if he has another Brutalizer, obviously I want to kill it with this. But any troop, really, I would want to kill at this point. So he can do this for two, but he won't. There's no way he does that here. As he... Oh, well, okay, he does. So maybe he's just got a bolt and I'm dead. So... Looks like I'm probably just dead here. Well, okay, so he does have that. That's super ideal. Let me F1 so I don't uh, let him swing. Now, ideally he has another in hand. <laughs> that would be dreamy, but unlikely. But we do stop that. So we're at five. This is now five damage a turn without shards. Holy moly, it's another shard, which is not the worst. Yeah, dead to tendrils. I know. They don't run many. Oh, lordy lords. <laughs> it's not good. Not good, so let's uh, attack in. I don't have much of a clock here. Again, I'm at nine shards. Brave. Uh, if I do draw another Grim Justice, I can at least get one of these back if he does get a troop down. Which, did he really actually take out all these troops? I'm really confused. <laughs> Looks like he might have actually have another shard himself. Looks like it. Alright, that is... Did I actually play... I think I played a Blood Shard, so hopefully I wasn't stuffing that up. This is now Fatal on board if this survives here, as we do have the thresholds. Let's see if we can get a Cluckadon, a Cluckadon, come on Kismet. I shouldn't have also played the break, well I guess I wanted the damage because it is also lethal. Didn't get a troop there, but we've got Fatal not represented, so he can easily top deck something though to kill me, because that's very likely a shard based on how he's playing. So if he has, if that's a shard, all he needs to do is draw any burn and I lose the game. So let's see if I lose the game. But I have, I have lethal. This is lethal, these are lethal. Do, does he win? That's the question. He didn't play a shard, but he probably top decked a bolt because I'm the unluckiest fluber. And he did seem to do that very quickly. And it's a tendrils. So, yep, that's game. That is game. Bummer. <laughs> I almost had him, almost had him there. Oh well, we die. I think uh, maybe, maybe that would have went a little bit differently had I played that a bit differently. Either way, that was uh, at least some good uh, 
showing of the deck there. So let's go back to the the uh, deck itself. So yeah, uh, let's look at the reserves. So yeah, not drawing any of those is a bit floobs, but uh, it was surprising that he didn't play many. Maybe he did take out a lot of troops there. It's definitely possible. Uh, so let me think here. Yeah, like one thing I did take out of the deck was like Nature's Reigns and stuff, because I was more worried about the Ruby Aggro. And that's why this guy's in there. Bella, what's up, girl? You want to join us? Come here. Come on. Sit down. So, let's see. What ways can we improve the deck to make it better against Yodel? I mean, I think it's still good against Yodel, but... Uh... Like, I think the main deck at, at this point is... Uh... Pretty decent, pretty decent. Not much to improve on. Like, obviously, you do need to have all the underworld dudes I've put in. And I, I went through all the underworld troops, every single one in these colors. Um, and yeah, like, there's there's another good one that I that is good against certain decks, which is Merciless Color. Uh, can be very good against, like, you know, Lixel and stuff like that. You know, sacrifice effects are good. And that's this this guy fills the same role, has that Scrounder of Prime. It's an evasion troop, but yeah, Merciless Color is another one that I. Wouldn't have mind to fit in, but there's a lot of things I wanted to fit in the deck. A lot of things. And there just wasn't room. But yeah, I do like the Grim Justice. Again, it synergizes really well with all the uh, two drops, especially all the Might Singers. Um, these are, you know, kind of needed. Um, you know, because there's a lot of good socket cards now, especially, you know, potential socket based decks. Um, but also just, you know, <laughs> in a mirror match, as, as I said, Kind Mime. Bringing those in against JJ, they were running the same list, so uh, giving giving Kai Mime a bit of a leg up, and I think potentially he won game three because of this card. Um, definitely would be a very very high impact if you were to do that on like, I mean either of them, but obviously stopping them getting the card draw would be a big deal. A big deal, but uh, yeah, either of them getting targeted is just very good value, obviously, when you kill. Uh, New player was Grim Justice. Let me zoom in on that for you. Uh, so yeah, just drop to one target troop with cost two uh, or less. So very good for you know to kill anti-aggro stuff. Uh, you know you could kill like a bolt spasm or, or an iron anarchist or something. You know, any, any anything that's two or lower. It's also great against you know my singers and that type of stuff. Obviously the down the biggest downside to the card is the basic action, but the upside is pretty damn nice. So I figured I'd. Uh, you know, put that in there. So yeah, put up to one target. This is something that I don't think JJ and Kaiman use this card, but I like it, so I've left it in my version. Um, but yeah, getting getting back stuff. You know, especially as a Kangaluchu deck. You know, as I said, had I got this in my crypt with that, and I had this card, and I could kill like against the Otto just then. Say say he had a troop out that I could kill, and or say he had two out. Ideally, I could kill one. Get a counter out of the grave and then kill the other. Like that'd be extremely nice play. Uh, so I like having it in there. A fourth princess wouldn't be the worst against obviously uh, um, um, control decks and stuff with lots of actions. But uh, yeah, vampire kiss would be uh, would be all right. But uh, I'm not too worried about Yodel. Um, but yeah, if, if I was to wanting to, to make it a bit more better against Yodel, let, let me let me see. So I could I could even take out a shard honestly. Like I was getting a little bit too many shards, and the deck has ways. You know, you got the several several ramp cards or, or you know ways to get to more shards. So I think if I was like this, I actually I originally was running one less shard. JJ and Kai Mine went up a shard. So I can't remember what. Uh, what I had in instead, but because uh, yeah, you'll see that it's 24. I, I generally will do 23, uh, especially with the deck that's Howling Grave. So I've just put it up again, uh, just because you know I figured I'd run mostly how they run the deck, which I think I've got it pretty much right there, the main deck. Uh, but yeah, so I would probably take out a Blood Shard, as obviously we need the Wild. You know, early game you can see that most of it's Wild, so the Wild is more important. It also, you know, more important for this, more important for the Crocos, uh, and all that sort of stuff. The the blood can come later. So I'm actually going to do that now. So that opens up a slot in the main deck. So... Uh, that can allow me to do... 
If I wanted to, I could just do a main deck Carnosaur. It wouldn't be the worst. And that opens up, you know, because, like, ideally when you're, when you are, like, say you've got a list and a sideboard, and you're happy with them, like, you're really, like, you're, I've got answers for everything, but then you're like, oh, I've got one more card that I really would like to fit in. In this case, where I'm taking out a shard, the best case, you know, to then do, to then complement the main deck, since I'm editing the main deck, the best place to then get a card from is your reserves. Because then you're opening up a, uh, a card in, you know, a spot in your reserves. Which is very important. So, what I might just do here is run a one of main Carnosaur. Just because, you know, it's a good card, there's a plenty of stuff in the meta it actually works against, so there's not really, I can't really think of a reason not to do it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to actually just put that in there. In the main deck, why not? And again, we are primary wild. So I can't, again, it's a good card, and it has many targets in the meta. You know, there's plenty of decks running, you know, like if you look at Jeff, Jeff Hoogland's deck, or the Mono Ruby deck, uh, or this deck itself, you know, you've got plenty of things that you're going to want to kill. You know, Howling Braves, Might Singers, obviously Yodel. Uh, so yeah, one of that is fine. I mean, even doing two, like maybe doing two, in this matter, it actually may be correct to do two, two Karner's main, two Croc main, one Croc side. Like I can mix things up a little bit there, because the deck obviously does have good removal. And it has, uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe that is correct to there to do two Karnas. I'm actually going to make that change. So we're going to put in the two Karnas. We're going to put one of that Crux in the side. And wait a second. How am I... I don't know. Oh, right. No, I, I'm like, how, do, how am I only at 15? How am I at 15? It's because I didn't take him out of here yet. <laughs> so there we go. So, that, so I've still got that slot open. This isn't really the necessary, but it is, again, it's something decent. If I'm against very hard aggro, especially like Mono Ruby. Like, Mono Ruby's a very tough matchup regardless, no matter how you look at it. Um, for for decks, you know, for a lot of decks, the, the Baby Yeti one with the Mama. With the Mama can be pretty rough, mainly because the champion is really, really brutal. Um, so I don't mind having this in there. Um... Are you getting buffering? Let me check my frame. I'm not dropping any frames, so I'm not sure what's going on there, I reckon. But I will be. This will be up on YouTube pretty much when I'm done. Uh, so let's just think about uh, what we want as the last slot. So actually, I have a. I have a, some notes on my desk. Actually, let's look at that. So when I was originally building the deck, I was like, all right, what are the things that could be good either in main or sideboard? So I've actually got a list. So let me have a look. So winds of change is something I considered, but then I decided to go with this guy instead just because he's like crazy <laughs> he does so much I mean he's a lot slower maybe he's not the best in this deck anymore because it is lower to the curve uh, originally as I was saying I had the bunny with the with the uh, the ramp and that was you know that, that, that's why I was like well I've got the ramp you know I've got I mean this still has decent you know I was getting to a lot of shards in those games obviously I've taken one out but I'll leave it in there anyway uh, Yezo can is also something I had on my list and I I don't mind it um, Relentless Corruption, but that's something you'd want to run as a 4 of. But that's a decent sideboard card, but I can't fit it, so that, that was off the list. Grim Justice I have wrote down, but I've obviously included that now. Uh, Nefarious Corruptor is actually something I consider. Uh, Vine Lash as well, or Gale Force, things like that. Um, and Gron's Gift as well. But yeah, no, I, don't, I have less ramp now, so... But yeah, so Nefarious Corruptor, I think, is good against certain decks, you know. But as a one of it's like it's not that high impact. But you could do him with, uh, I mean, you could do him with the sack gem if you wanted. Uh, but you could also do it with the the wild get more troop thing. <laughs> but against certain decks, like this could be something that you're like, oh, you know what? I'll side that in, just because then you might be able to make your opponent. I mean, it's it's not good enough, so I'm not going to. But you know, it's something. But um, maybe just a simple vine lash or a nature's reins. Uh, like maybe nature's reins, like because like. Against slow decks, like, you know, this guy is good against constant based decks or artifacts based decks where they're not, like, super fast. So things like Oberon's Eulogy, uh, or, or where they need multiple constants to really, you know, get value out of it. Uh, so, you know, this guy's good against that, where they're slower. So I may just want a Nature's Reigns in, in the main, in the sideboard for, you know, like a Yodel is even fine against. You know, it's not the greatest, but it also... It's something like it's like okay maybe maybe I'm against a deck where 
where this guy can come in because they're slow, but then maybe if they're if they're a bit faster than usual, then I might bring this. Like it's, I probably should just use one or the other. But anyway, I'm not going to uh, dwell on it at the moment. It's something that you know, as you the more you test and the more the meta is obviously uh, being built, the the more you're going to be like, all right, we need to answer this card or we need to answer that card. Like honestly, the deck has some decent answers for things like Lixel. But it, it is still potentially probably lacking. Like there's this guy and this guy. Um, this also doesn't work. So it is still lacking against things like Elixir. Um, so that's where you know maybe a merciless color in the reserves would be fine. But uh, anyway, we're not going to go over that. Otherwise, I'll be sitting here talking forever. Already actually gone for a stream for a long time. I was actually wanting to make this a short episode. But either way, uh, again, so there's the deck list. I'm going to stop talking about it now. But uh, if you do have questions, as I said, this will be on YouTube. So for those of you watching it on YouTube right now, uh, feel free to, to ask questions about the deck or even suggestions. Because no deck is like the best it can be. There's always potential room for improvement. Um, you know, just as JJ made some changes, as I said... Steadfast and uh, I, I do like that a lot more. It's something I was just like, yeah, I'll just do it if I need it post reserves. But it just it's illogical actually. My 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 initial thought I was just like, yeah, whatever, and I just kept this gem. But it actually is just way 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 more logical because steadfast. I guess I potentially forgot about the steadfast. But the sky guard I was just like, eh, if I'm against flyers, I'll change to that. But really, the thing that makes that very powerful is the steadfast. Because then if you're against aggressive decks, you can still swing and defend. And that's a very relevant factor. So, anyway, yeah. That is the deck, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, yeah, tell me uh, what you what you like, what you don't like. Any suggestions in the comments. Uh, next week, uh, whenever I do the next episode of this, I will very likely cover the deck Jeff Hugenlin ran. But, yeah, that's pretty much it for now. So, thank you all for watching. Those of you watching live now on Twitch... I'm probably going to stick around for a bit, so stick around yourself. For those of you watching on YouTube, thank you for watching, and please consider subscribing. Flippity-floops!